Hey, good morning. Welcome everybody um, to our live stream this morning. Today we are going to be covering arts and humanities subjects and how you can get to university to study those, what's involved in them, um, and a bit of information from some lovely graduates who studied humanities subjects who are going to tell you all about what they enjoyed about it and some of the different paths you can take. So the main aims of this, fairly simple, Today we're going to learn what subjects are included in the Arts and Humanities and to hear from some Humanities graduates. So I'm going to give a brief introduction to what the Arts and Humanities are before passing it over to some of my colleagues who are going to tell you about their specific degree path. So the Arts and Humanities is a huge broad subject. Um, you might see this thrown around when your teachers or your tutors at college are talking about humanities. You might be thinking what subjects are actually included in that humanities banner. So you can see on the screen that we've got a lot of um, round circles with all the, the subjects in, and that's just a selection of things that count as arts and humanities. So you can probably see there's a common theme throughout the humanities of, the, of reading, of studying um, sort of literature and texts from the past, as well as philosophy. So really thinking deeply and getting arg arguments and different points of view across. Then if we look at the arts, we've got drama, theatre, music and dance, as well as things like visual arts and film and media studies. So that's where the creat creativity really comes in if you wanted to study something in the arts. So although you might think of university of this place that you go and you study, you read books, you write essays, it's not necessarily true. And all these subjects on the screen that you can see now are really interesting ways of getting practical experience in subjects and then going on to a career in that. So what we're going to do is we'll, we'll zoom into a few of these today and we'll look at more detail in a, a couple of the humanity subjects you can take. But if any of these on the screen right now sound interesting to you, um, feel free to look them up afterwards or send us a question through the Q&A about what is that subject? What can I study in that? So I think now we'll pass it over to my colleague, Lewis, who's going to tell you a bit about history. Hi, guys. So, um, yeah, my name is Lewis. I studied history at the University of Liverpool from uh, 2015 to 2018. Um, so I picked history because um, really it was a subject I enjoyed the most at school. So my mum was always into history. She uh, dragged me along to museums when I was a kid. And then as I got older, I started to in, enjoy them a little bit more and then uh, really started got interested in history. So I really enjoyed it at school, like I said, and it also gives you lots of skills that employers look for. Like I was thinking of some of the um, subjects to choose at university and um, I thought history would be good because it gives you a lot of uh, skills like research skills, uh, other things like that and uh, creating arguments stuff, um, which is really good for the workplace. Um, so before doing my degree in history, um, I, I did A levels, so I went through the conventional route and I did history, politics and philosophy and ethics. So they're all quite similar essay based subjects which sort of complemented each other and was quite good for my application. Uh, and so also how, how I was assessed when I went to university. So um, in first year, I had about 50% exams, 50% coursework. Uh, and then when I went into second year, I had just the one exam and then none in third year. So if you don't like exams, it can be quite a good subject to choose. So when you pick your modules for uh, each year uh, before they start, uh, you can see how each is assessed. So if there's a, a, a module on, on something, it will say, you know, 30% coursework, 70% exam, et cetera, et cetera, which, ha which can help you um, inform your decision really, which is really good. Um, I wasn't a big fan of uh, exams, so I chose um, more, more coursework based modules. And yeah, I really enjoyed studying history. So um, in my experience, the, the first year was, was really very general. So I covered really big periods in time and, and, and huge geographic areas as, um, rather than specialising. But then in, in second year, uh, when you've had, you know, you had your first year, you've had a, a look at loads of different periods of time and, and areas. You get to go, oh, this really interested me. I'll do this module in, you know, a modern day France or something like that. So, um, so second year allows you to specialise 
a little bit more in areas that you're interested in. And even more so in third year, when, when you're doing your dissertation in third year, which is your, your big final project on almost whatever you like, it's got to be a really, really small niche, really interesting subject that really when you finish it, you will be really an expert in that area that very few people will know more than you in your little niche, which is which is really great and really interesting. So uh, yeah, that's me. Thank you. Thanks, Lewis. So now, next we're going to go to my colleague Chloe, who's going to talk a bit about her subject at university. Hi everyone, my name's Chloe. I work for the Higher Horizons uh, Chester Hub. Um, I studied archaeology at university and I absolutely loved it. So not a lot of people know what archaeology is. Um, it's actually the study of buildings, graves, tools and other objects that belong to people who lived in the past and you study them to learn more about their culture and society. So in a way it's kind of like history um, but you study it rather than uh, a lot of book learning, you tend to study it through physical objects. And this is really great uh, because if you're a very practical person and you're really hands on, um, that is definitely the way to go if you also really enjoyed something like history at school. So um, I really enjoyed history at school, but I actually uh, left school when I was 17. Um, so a little bit later on, um, I went and did an access course and um, I chose subjects that really complemented archaeology because I knew that that's what I wanted to do. So um, I studied English, which pretty much complements any subject you're going to do. Um, I study history um, and I studied sociology. So if you've never heard of sociology, um, that works really well with any kind of humanities based subjects, because essentially you're studying people, the way we live, things like that. So I chose those three and um, I also volunteered at the local um, archaeology society um, for about a year before I applied to university. So I'd already got a few skills and my belt from that as well. Um, which really helped with my application. So uh, when I was looking at um, university courses, um, I realised that archaeology, whilst it seems like no one knows about it, um, actually there's like 390 courses for degrees in archaeology in the UK alone. So a huge amount to choose from. Um, when I was choosing my course, I had a lot of different things in mind. So firstly, um, I'm a very practical person. I um, enjoy being practical, being creative, being really hands on. So I looked for a course that would complement all of those things. Um, I also really, really hated exams at school. That was my massive downfall and very much a coursework kind of person. So I actually chose a degree that had no exams whatsoever and the closest we came to an exam was basically one day in a lab where you were assessed. Um, so that was really useful for me. I also chose a course that I thought um, would give me work experience as well as the experience of um, actually learning within university. Um, that's really useful when you're coming up to um, the end of university and you're looking at jobs because there are several people competing with the same job. And um, if you've got practical kind of work experience alongside your university, um, that's really going to help you. So um, on the screen here, you can see that there's a crest from the University of Reading. That's where I studied um, and there is a pit picture of an archaeological dig. So uh, that dig was something that is actually part of the University of Reading. It's called Silchester and it's an old Roman town. It was one of the main Roman towns in the UK. So there's a huge amount of archaeology there to actually look at. And that dig has been going on for years. Every time we take off a new layer, we find new things, which is really exciting. So um, that is something that you can get experience in in this particular university. In the at the end of the first year in the summer holidays, you um, 
go and do a six week dig there. You stay on site as well in tents. If you can see that there's uh, tents in the background of that dig. Um, it's really, really fun. It's a great community. And um, once you've done the first field school um, in the first year, at the end of your second year, you can then become a supervisor and you supervise the first years that are then coming in to do their first dig. So again, you're getting responsibility and it's really useful, practical work that will help you with a job in the future. So um, I also chose it because it's something that I'd never really studied before. It's not something that most people do um, at university. Uh, sorry, not at university, at school, I mean, um, or at college. It's offered at very few colleges in the UK, so not a lot of people will have done it before. It's totally new, so everybody going into that course um, all are in the same boat because everyone has never studied this subject before. Um, you, it gets assessed through uh, different um, things, so you do do a few essays, um, which it is not my favourite thing in the world, but you know, every university course usually has some kind of essay that you have to do. Um, but most of the things that we did are things like field work, which is exactly what you see on the picture. It's going out, it's being in field, it's digging things up. Um, field work can also be things like uh, walking over a freshly ploughed field and picking up anything that you find there and assessing it afterwards. Um, we did things like laboratory work. So three of my modules were in um, the lab. One of those was skeletal analysis, which is where you study uh, human bones. Um, that's really interesting. You study human bones, real human bones, that is, uh, for things like disease, um, cut marks, anything like that, to basically assess how that person might have died. Um, you also do the same in something called zoo archaeology. So that's the study of animal remains. Um, and again, you would look at the remains of the animals. Um, usually it's just bones at this point. And uh, you would assess them for exactly the same thing to see how they were, um, how they lived, how they died, what they ate, all that kind of thing. Um, I also did something called bioarchaeology, which is um, essentially the study of um, past landscapes. So that could be something like looking at pollen or looking at um, different types of soil um, and how these are affected over time by um, human intervention. So that's really interesting. You get to use a lot of microscopes, for example, um, and it's really good for um, uh, if you're a practical person and you want to have a lot of things where you're actually doing it at that point. Um, and you would usually do things like reports at the end of that. So um, reports as well could be things like looking at artefacts. Artefacts are things that you find in the ground um, and you would wash them off and you would assess them and you would decide where they came from, um, who might have used them, things like that. So it's really, really interesting. You can gain so much knowledge out of just one little fragment of like a pot or something like that. Um, I also took a module in drawing um, archaeological finds, which is again really interesting. So um, you have to draw them a specific way. You don't have to be good at art because it's all about measuring and then copying all of the little lines that you've measured. So that is something that's really interesting as well. Um, in the first year, it's normally quite general. So you look at practical techniques in archaeology. You look at archaeology through time and you look at the sorts of kind of careers that you can do in archaeology. And then when it comes to the second year, generally you'd start focusing on a particular thing. So if you're more interested in the science of things, you can go down a science route or you can go down a humanities route, which is less science based and more about interpreting the culture and society through these objects. Um, if you go down that route, generally you specialise in a particular time period. So that runs all the way from um, prehistory to uh, very recent history. So for example, um, my 
friend chose to look at World War II archaeology. Um, another person I knew um, did medieval archaeology. Someone else did Roman archaeology. Really interesting. And uh, I actually did prehistory, which is anything before writing. It's essentially evolution of humans right up until we learned to actually write. Um, I absolutely loved my course and um, it was really interactive and really practical, like I said, and had loads of work experience. And I love talking to people and I love being practical and creative. So that really worked for me. Um, can I go on to the next slide, Lisa? Thank you very much. OK, so um, the other thing is I actually applied to go on a work placement, which again is very common in this type of course. Um, and I managed to get a placement in Finland for two months. Um, that was incredibly interesting. Absolutely loved it. Best two months of my life. Um, it was all expenses paid as well, which again is quite common um, if you're a student and you're looking for experience. So um, this was a museum and also a dig site. So it was prehistory um, in what's called the Neolithic period. So this is when humans first started to um, farm. So I got to uh, build this house on the left here, um, do lots of um, activities that they would have done at that time. Um, and I would dress up in uh, clothes. So that would be uh, different animal skins and things like that. So on uh, the right here, you can see there's a reenactment as well of a camp. Um, it was really, really fun. And I definitely recommend going for any of those opportunities if you've got them. Um, if you do have any questions about archaeology, um, just go to our website at higherhorizons.co.uk forward slash ask, and I will be happy to answer your questions. Uh, that's all from me. Thank you. So next up, we'll have, um, Naomi, who's going to talk a bit about her degree subject with you all. Hello, yes, so I studied a subject called classical civilization. Um, and that is a variation or the name of um, the variation of classics, which is all about the study of the ancient world. Um, and as you can see on the slide, I wanted to emphasize what the ancient world actually is. Um, so I think people think specifically about Greece and Rome. They think that actually, and I think often you think they happened at the same time or um, that they didn't cover that much amount of history. But basically they covered about, the study of classics covered about the same amount of time as the study of modern history. So everything post the fall of the Roman Empire to now. Um, it studies a similar, if not greater, time period. Um, so if you think about how much has changed since the end of the Roman Empire um, to now, uh, you know, there were similar rates of change, obviously, to different extents, but, they're, you know, within that time period. And it also covered, um, as a sort of already been mentioned about history, but it also covered so much more of the world than I think we sometimes realise. So there were two main empires that often get studied as part of this degree subject, which are the Greek, um, the Greek world and the Roman Empire. Um, the Greek world came first and then it was the Roman Empire. Um, but you can also get to study things like the ancient Egyptians um, and also sort of the ancient world in the East as well. Um, and even just the Roman Empire, I thought it was worth noting, goes from sort of Western Spain and Northwest Africa all the way to India. So you're covering a massive um, geographical area as well as a really long and extensive period of history. Um, one of the reasons that I love this subject so much is because um, I, I grew up reading books about it. There's often a lot of like children's fiction, but also young adults and, um, and adult fiction um, written in the Roman and Greek worlds. Um, and I found this really fascinating and I found it a really immersive world. And I just wanted to show you some places that I've been that some of which are much close to home um, that um, are examples of the Roman world, um, like basically on our doorstep. So if you see the picture on the bottom left is actually from Chester. 
So I don't know how local people are, but if you know Chester well, you may have been to the Roman ruins at Chester. Um, and then the picture above that on the top left is from York, which is close to where I'm from and where I live in Hull. Um, so that's an example of Roman walls. Um, and the really fascinating thing there is how different societies have built on those walls over time to cr keep the sort of, yeah, keep the keep the walls going and you can still walk on them. Um, and then the middle picture looks a bit like the Colosseum in Rome, but it's actually a very well preserved amphitheatre in Nimes in so southern France. Um, and um, I basically just wanted to emphasise that the Roman world in this part of Europe anyway is all around us um, and is something that actually we encounter on a daily basis, both in sort of the things we might walk past without even thinking about, but also in our laws and in our literature um, and in our understanding of the world generally. And I think this is one of the things that really interested me about classics as a subject was that although it is really far away and it feels very alien in many ways, there's also parts of it that feel weirdly familiar. Um, so it's a great way of escaping into a subject whilst also feeling like you still have some connection to it and um, you can learn about our world today from studying that long ago. Um, so the, the degree course I actually studied was classical civilizations, and so I just wanted to talk briefly about the different degree courses you could do within this subject. So there's ancient history, which is basically what it says on the tin. You would end up studying um, very much the history of the ancient world, so ancient Greece, ancient Rome, um, probably um, ancient Egypt as well a little bit. Um, then there's classics, and classics is more language based. So if you're interested in languages, um, but you wanted to maybe do something a bit different, this is a really interesting degree to do because um, often nowadays you don't have to have done Latin or Greece, Greek even at A level. You can have just, a, if you can demonstrate that you've got sort of an ability in languages, if you've done langu one language at A level, often degree courses will be able to teach you Greek and Latin from scratch. Um, and sometimes at some of the um, more older universities, you have to take a little bit more time to do this. Um, but in a lot of other universities, they'll just teach it to you as part of your course. So classics basically looks at literature from the ancient world um, and writings, but in the original language. And so what was classical civilization, which is the degree, the degree I did? In some universities, this is called classical studies. Um, and it's basically a combination of ancient history and classics, um, but which really suited me because I really loved history and I really loved English literature. Um, so my A-levels were history, English literature and music. Um, and I really wanted to find a way to carry on studying the arts and humanities in a sort of broader way. And this degree really, really gave me that opportunity because it basically combines every element of culture from literature to artefacts to um, buildings and material culture to um, sometimes in some in some cases music and poetry um, just all within the context of the ancient world so you're studying a huge breadth a huge amount of stuff um, yeah so my, so and on my degree so I studied at the University of Warwick um, and within my degree, I didn't have to do in-depth study of any languages. Um, I could do, but I did have to do either beginner's Greek or Latin in my first year. Um, and I chose to do Latin and I did, um, and I then actually decided to take that on um, into my second year. And then in my third year, I stopped Latin, but I was able to do an Italian module. Um, so. If you were to choose to do classics or classical civilization or classical studies, um, you could do language skill, you could pursue language skills, or you could follow a more um, literature uh, directed path, or you could specialize more in the history side of things. Um, and I guess I just want to explain, like, I guess I enjoyed it so much because it was so immersive and although maybe we're not looking, it's not quite so practical as an archaeology course, it is much more 
essay based. Um, I think similarly to history at Liverpool, it was 50-50. So we had 50% coursework and 50% exam. Um, but even within that, you're doing a whole range of things. So the coursework would sometimes look at different types of learning, how you could teach things online um, and how you communicate about the classics. Um, and then but and then in the S in the exams, even you would have two types of essay question, one which was more traditional and one which was sort of a detective work study where you were given a piece, you were given a picture or a piece of text and you had to um, write about it in detail, but you had to work things out from what you were given. So it's very much sort of detective work. Um, yeah, and I think if you are looking for a degree that you want to enjoy and that can combine a lot of different subjects and different ways of studying, I think classical civilization is a, a really great subject to study. Um, and I just wanted to finish, if you go to the next slide, Melissa. Um, we're by highlighting some books if you wanted to get a bit of an idea of the ancient world um, without doing the A-level, maybe it's not it's not possible to do the A-level any everywhere. And I certainly didn't do classics A-level, but um, the top three books I would say were better for if you're like younger, um, if you're like maybe 13 to 14. Um, those books are a really good introduction. And then maybe if you're a little bit older, if you're in sick form, the bottom two books um, a really sort of interesting looks at the classical world and specifically something I was interested in, which is women in the classical world. Uh, so yeah, if you have any questions about classics or classical civilization, feel free to let me know. Thank you. Thanks Naomi for that, that was really interesting. Um, so we've only got a few minutes left, so I think what we'll do is We'll, we'll just mention a few of the other subjects that you might hear about in arts and humanities before maybe going to questions, maybe one each for each of our speakers. So if, if you're sat in the audience now thinking um, you've got a specific question, feel free to send it in and I'll ask that to some of the wonderful people we've had speaking today. So another common one that people can study as part of the arts is literature and languages. As Naomi mentioned, you can do languages in in degrees such as classics, but you've also got the more um, traditional language routes where you can study French, German, Spanish. But lots of universities also offer things like um, things like Czech, things like Russian um, and Japanese. So there's all sorts of different languages you can study at university. Um, performing arts is also a really popular one. There's many, many degrees in this. I feel like that is the common theme of the arts and humanities. If you can think of something that you enjoy doing, it's probably a degree. So people can do musical theatre studies, set design, stage design. There's also things such as puppetry. If we look at um, the creative and visual arts, which again is such a huge area of the arts and humanities, um, lots of people might go to study the traditional things such as fine art or creative arts. But there's also film, media, fashion design um, and at the more specialist arts universities you can do stuff like comic book design, illustrative design and all the things that um, exist in culture that we enjoy every single day. Um, people are trained at universities to do them so if you love um, design and being creative that might be something to think about. And a common thing that comes up is, does, but does the creative industries pay? Um, does that side of the arts actually have jobs? So these are some stats that I've taken just from the government website and the Arts and Humanities Research Council that have found that in 2016, um, the UK creative industries were worth 91.8 billion pounds a year to the UK. And obviously that might be a bit different currently, but as the creative industries picks back up, um, we can see that it makes a huge contribution to the economy. So when you're thinking about the arts, it's not necessarily that choice between earning a really good salary or doing something you love. It can be both at the same time. So I think we'll, we'll just pose one question to each of our speakers that we've got here today. So I guess if I go to Lewis first, we've got a question in that um, is asking about um, how did you decide which university you wanted to apply for? Um, 
Really, I wanted somewhere that um, I'm from North Shropshire, so I wanted somewhere that was far enough from home, but not too far. So I had quite a few options where I live, really. There was uh, Liverpool, Manchester, Birmingham, they're all about an hour and a half away. So um, I had quite a lot to choose from, really. But then uh, I just had a look at the courses. Um, I think location's a huge, a huge factor. And then after that, I looked at the courses. So I was between Liverpool uh, and Manchester for me. But I just preferred the course at Liverpool um, and as well the city too. Um, I much preferred Liverpool to Manchester just just personally, just walking around, you know, getting a feel from the place and stuff. So um, yeah, I initially looked on distance because uh, there's so many to choose from. You need to really find some criteria just to just to pick out the hat maybe and just see right. Okay, I want somewhere, you know, this far or, or something like that. And then from there, I looked at the courses. So. Fab, thanks for this. Um, and then if we move to Chloe, we've got a question that's just asking, um, what's the most interesting artefact you had the chance to see during your degree? Oh, that is a good question, Melissa. Um, oh, I think for me, it was um, actually it was part of um, probably not the most interesting artifact itself, but the significance of it. Um, we actually found part of a, an amber ring um, in the dig in Finland, which was, um, you know, it doesn't sound like the most interesting thing, but actually it was that was like solid gold for the time that was really really sought after that Baltic amber and uh, it had not been found before at that site so um, it generated loads of like um, attention and we got in the newspaper and stuff and I think just the joy of finding something and obviously the supervisor that was there had been working on that dig for years and had not found anything like that before so the joy in his face was just really exciting so more of a geeky answer than a uh, than a fascinating artefact really. <laughs> Thanks that sounds definitely very exciting um, and then just as one final question for Naomi um, what was your favourite thing to research during your degree? I think my favourite thing to research was women because often if you look that far back and generally in history the female voice is not given well, it doesn't there often isn't a female voice or at least you have to look harder for it and I think that was the thing I found really exciting was reading through sources and looking at mosaics and um, vases and things and and sort of from that working out what the life of women might have been in various different contexts so I looked at um, female poets uh, in ancient Greece and um, women in sort of early Christianity and women. One of the really interesting ones I did was um, women in the royal or the imperial Roman family. So um, they were women who had power and status and actually got up to some quite uh, uh, crazy things. Um, lots of murder going on, uh, <laughs> things like that. So um, yeah, I think that that was something personally I found really interesting. Cool, thank you. Yeah, it's definitely, I think that's a common theme across the, the humanities. It's definitely a really good chance to sort of learn about those bits of history in the past that we didn't, perhaps didn't realise existed and sort of give people more agency in the past than we thought they had. Um, so just to end that, I hope that was interesting for everyone and it give you a nice overview of some of the humanities subjects that you can study at university. If you have any further questions about the courses that you've heard about or just about university life in general, um, you can send us a question at higherhorizons.co.uk slash ask um, and all of us are on there. You can choose our profile or read what people's interests are and send them a question. So just finally, just to end, um, if you were interested in perhaps more creative and performing arts side of what we've touched upon today, um, we have one next Friday that my two of my wonderful colleagues are going to be running on creative and performing arts, which you can check. You can find the links to on our social media. Um, so thanks for listening, everyone, and hope you have a good rest of your day.